Okay, so we got all the parts cleaned up now. We're going to start to put it back together uh, on our tables. If I, as I have found, uh, I try to lube as little as possible because lubrication also draws dust, which is uh, just more to clean. We do use a mobile Polyrex EM. Uh, they do ha It is a non-lithium grease. There are some other options that are out there that have been used that we were uh, given when we in our uh, spare parts kit when we first opened. I find that that lubricant uh, over time it it can, it goes back to its original form and starts just turning into a, a oil, which is kind of a mess. I find that this uh, mobile Polyrex EM holds up very well. It is a, a blue grease. Uh, there are two parts that I grease on our system when I put it back together. I grease the big round wheel. I only grease it on the bottom of this smaller star on the inside of it. I put grease on that. And then I put it on the base of this drive gear that actuates the ST switch. I put it on the bottom of that. I use about five pumps out of my grease gun to coat the bottom of this. And I use about a half of a pump to coat that star, that bottom star on that gear drive right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and start dropping everything back in. I'm going to start with my uh, rectangle stop block. Start with the furthest one back. all the screws in there and get them started and then I'll come back with the drill to save me some time. Alright, you'll notice right here by the ST switch there's uh, four holes or two pairs. You want to go in the pair that is closest to your ST switch and as always if you forget where it goes you can look in the lane next to you. All the other holes should be self-explanatory. Hopefully you might recall where you took them out. You were the one who extracted them anyways. And last but not least. Right up here, right up front by the camera. I won't see it very well. Just have my hand in your way. drill on like a number four setting. I don't want to crack out these housings. They are plastic. So I said that the housings are plastic. You don't want to crack them out. So watch how tight you make these. my number two Phillips anymore. I'm going to take it out. I'm going up to my number three Phillips. Alright, let's go ahead and we're going to start with this square drive shaft. Put it in first. And it does use a 10 millimeter metric so wrench or socket, whichever you prefer. as fast as I can while I try to explain what I'm doing. There we go. Alright, that's in. Take my number 10 metric wrench. Put on the lock nut. 
tighten it up. One and two. And it's got a uh, number three screw and two washers and uh, two lock nuts on it. Alright, that's back in. Sorry, I'm just gathering up a few parts here. Alright. Next I'm going to put on the smaller gear wheel that works right in correlation with this square shaft drive to the upper switch cluster area. You're going to take the uh, large bolt, run it in to the bottom of the table next to the square shaft. Take your bushing that has the recess on the top. Make sure the top's up in the air. Drop it on that same one. Put your star gear back on. Grab your smaller bushing. Hope I'm not in everybody's way to see this stuff. It goes on top. Washer. And the number 13 lock nut. Tighten it up. Number three Phillips from the bottom. Alright. Okay, we're ready to shove the what actuates the spotting tong switch back in. You'll notice I've got the lubrication on it. This is important that you put that lubricant on this because it actually helps you from getting error code 76s. I've done different tests in different ways on these pin setters of lube in one spot, no lube in another spot and seeing how it works and this this shaft, this uh, tooth rack has to have lubrication on it. It'll keep your keep it from bouncing back for when your uh, switch cluster doesn't slip enough up top when it's stopping the spotting tongs when in their open position so it won't bounce back off of this stop block here. All right. Now it's time to throw in the big geared wheel which the lubricants on here as well. Come in from the bottom. My large one. Set my big gear wheel down on top of it. There we go. Get my large bushing. Slide it down there. Washer. Large washer. And a number, another number 13 metric nut, lock nut, top. Let's tighten that down. There we go. All right. Now it's time to throw back in our smaller gear wheels at the front and the back piece of advice I can give you on these, uh, this, the bolt that you put through the hole that holds these in, there is some play on it, about like an eighth of an inch. I'm a, I got the bolt up through the hole here. I'm going to drop the wheel down right on the center of it, take my bushing, put it through, and as I was saying, there is some play in it. I would push the wheel perp, uh, at a perpendicular angle. Basically, you want it to be at that 90 degree angle, put it straight into this long tooth rack that runs the spotting switch. Don't let it be, don't let it go towards the center of the table. Push it nice and square in, in, in the apex of the, I hope I'm describing this right, in the apex of that drilled hole, you want it to be as close to this ST drive uh, toothed rack as possible. Got to put my washer on the top. And the lock nut. Number 10 metric. Like I said, I'm, I'm pulling it basically straight to me where I'm sitting on the right side of your screen. Now I'm going to put in the rear one, which is back by the 10 pin. Run my bolt through the bottom. I don't lube those gear wheels either, the small ones. Put my bushing in on top of the bolt. Put my washer head on. Put the lock nut on. Same thing, I'm going to push it.
Try to use my hand. This direction is at as square as I can at a perpendicular angle with this track. Taking my lower square shaft, we're going to go ahead and re we're going to go ahead and install it on top of the square shaft here on the side. Remember, it's got two holes in it. Those got to go at the bottom because they got to line up with the two holes on your square shaft itself, on the square shaft gear drive itself. Don't know if I'm giving everything the proper name. Don't have the book in front of me today. Run my bolt through it. Come on out. Sorry about that. Drop the screw and drop the viewer. Let's try and get you set back up. See if I can fish this out real quick. There we go. Body slam the viewer. All right. Number eight wrench, number eight metric ratchet and socket. Sorry, it's a quarter inch ratchet. back up. Now I'm going to, maybe you can see this up here up top, there's a geared wheel right up top there. There's a square hole through the center of it. I'm getting ready to drop the other shaft in it that goes and slides inside and out of this one. Set you down again. I don't like a lot of wasted motion, so I'm not going to climb up out of the pin setter itself to get up top and drop this from the top. I do it from the bottom. A little bit more of a stretch, but in my opinion saves me from crawling out of this machine just one more time. Alright, I dropped it in from the top. Right now I've got it resting on the top of that square shaft up there. Get you like. You see? It's actually just resting right on top of it at a little bit of an angle. That's a, I leave it like that for a second while I lube it. Watch you don't bump the shaft with your elbow. It will come down fast and it'll knock a good knot on you. It's happened to me before. Alright. Here we go. Use about one full pump of the Polyrex. EM, putting it on the square sha square upper shaft, all four sides. There you go, so you can see all that blue lube on there while it's just resting, and then I'm going to feed it down inside the other one, and that will be the table all set up for the tongs and that's the end of this segment